This was our door for three years now, not very convenient. So a couple of splinters and winters later, ta-da! I have a door now! Actually, I have two doors, yay! And it only took us like six months to finish our project. We have kids, so we get busy. And we didn't do it in the order you should do it in. So at the end of the video, I'll show you my mistakes, our mistakes. That way you don't do them. So let's do this. So for both of our doors, we use seven cedar fence panels and 27 feet total of two by fours. If you don't have tools to cut, then you can actually ask them at your big box hardware store to cut them to size you need and they will. Just make sure you have the exact measurements you need for your project. Here are some of the tools that he used and some that he didn't end up using after all. And the tools you need might differ if the walls that you're adding it to are different. Here in El Paso, Texas, it's very common to have these rock walls dividing neighboring houses. So we need extra tools. First things first, you want to pick the color of the stain you're going to use. I tried four different colors on the 2x4s. Or you could just opt to put a clear coat so that you can at least water and weatherproof your cedar and it'll last a bit longer. Next, you're going to cut your 2x4s according to the size of your door opening. Ours is 40 inches wide, so he's cutting five pieces for the door that'll hold the panels. Here are the measurements we used. And two at 71 inches long, and those will be attached to the two side walls. Of course, there's always going to be a problem that arises. His circular saw got wonky here, so he had to replace the blade. Here is a picture of the one he But used. if you don't have this fancy equipment, you can always just use a handsaw. It might take you a little longer and a little more muscle, but it'll get the job done. This doesn't have to be an expensive project or one that's out of reach just because you don't have the equipment for it. Use your resources and ask around, ask your neighbors or friends or family if you could borrow their tools. Step three after cutting is you want to stain all of the wood pieces and the cedar wood panels. My daughter wanted to help me with these, so I let her. I like using a tiny roller. It's easier for me and I think it goes on smoother. I tried the foam brushes, but those discombobulate pretty quick. But sometimes I just use what I got handy, even an old rag will work. And if I forgot to mention it or you missed it before, I went with the colored tugboat. And after applying the first coat of stain, you wanna wait two hours minimum and then reapply the second coat or follow the manufacturer's instructions on the can of stain. We have rock walls where we live, so he has to even them out so that the wood could be as flush as possible. If you don't have to do this, you can skip to step five and add the two by fours to each side of the wall. I have to shave off some of this rock, so then it'll be level. All right, this is gonna be straight up and down right there. That bottom rock a little bit? Yeah. To be level to that top rock? So I'm gonna cut these off. The wood's going to come here. I'm going to shave off some of this rock to, to bring the 2x4 a little further in. And I'm going to shave, cut this off too. Can you go with that? Yeah. Okay. I'm go like this. It tells, it tells you what direction this thing goes. So. This way. Like that. It spins this way. Here's the arrow. And what are you cutting with that? I'm gonna shave off the the, oh, the, rock. the rock. And to remove some of the rock wall, he uses this grinder and a rotary hammer. And then the door itself is going to be six feet. So like a couple of inches off the ground, but right here. So it's going to be, we can make it as parallel, like even to this, but then we'll probably have about an inch and a half to two inches off the ground. Are you okay with that? I just don't want waffles getting out. Yeah, no waffles. An inch would be best. best. They add these rebars to the rock walls because people tend to put metal gates here. So initially he made a hole in the wood to stick the rebar through and he was going to screw a bolt onto the rebar or solder it somehow. But after doing all that, we realized that it didn't have to be done. Plus they didn't even put one of the rebars incorrectly. It just flopped off. So step five is he just screwed in the two by fours.
So adding the screws onto the rock wall is one method and the stucco wall here on the other side was a whole other method. There was no stud or even a ply board really. So he had to attach the two by fours a different way, which I'll show you later. If you want to jump to timestamp around 13 minutes, that's where he starts. He ended up just using one of these bolts and the reason for that was to even and level out this board since the rock wall is not even he used the bolts to even it out or rather level it out if you want to know which screws these are there's a picture at the beginning of the video So he initially cut the frame like this, but I don't want you to make the same mistake we did. So you want to cut it like this, the long way. So that when you add the two sideboards, you can check if the dimensions are correct the way he's doing here. Adding the side pieces should be your step five, but we went out of sequence on the other side and he connected them until the end. But I'm going to try to put this video in the order that you should go in. So for now, we're going to move on to step six and we're going to connect the rectangle frame that's going to hold on to those cedar fence panels. These are the screws he uses here. There's a picture at the beginning of the video. They're four and a half inches long and they're log screws. So you don't have to drill a hole first. You can actually just add these directly to the wood and they're not supposed to split the wood. But he's overly cautious and he likes to drill the hole first and then add the screw. So do as you wish. This is how he ended up connecting the diagonal board. But if you stay till the end, I'll show you how he initially did it and that did not work. And that's it for this part of the door. You just have to make sure that it fits in between the two sideboards. He initially made this using other hardware, and if you want to catch that at the end of the video, I'll show you what not to do. After double checking that the rectangle fits in between the door frame, now he's going to install this hardware, and you want to do this before you put the cedar panels onto the rectangle. Like that. Since flush, I don't open this way. Make sure that from here is the same as the bottom. The wall should hold more the weight. This one? Yeah. Not that one? Not that one. Unless we can find a stud, oh. then it's going to be hard to find a stud. The opposite was true on the other side of our house. We did find a stud against the stucco wall, so he put the hinge on that side. Plus, we have an air conditioner unit, so the door kind of needed to be opened outward, as opposed to this side, this one opened inward. And sounding like a broken record, you do want to add the two side door frames first, so that you yes, don't run into problems like this one, where you have to possibly shave off some of the rectangle frame. So see how this this is in front? 
uh -huh. this is gonna have to be a front thumb in. Because if it's back here, oh, right, right. the bottom's pretty tight. Yeah. If anything, I'll just shave or sand uh, whatever's. Because right here, it's, there's plenty of space, and then it kind of. So just make sure you're measuring the distance on the door frame so that they're even. And now we move on to step nine, and that's attaching the cedar fence panels. But you want to lay them on the ground first because wood is obviously not very symmetrical. So to find the best pattern, lay it on the ground first and then attach it to the frame. You want me to measure middle or just kind of? No, no. <laughs> Y'all, this man measures so much. I have to cut off so much footage of him measuring and... I love it. I'm so glad he's meticulous, but oh man, I don't have the patience <laughs> for this. <laughs> but I do love that part of him because our projects do come out very nice. <laughs> and here he's going to screw on the fence panels, just making sure that you grab the 2x4 in the back. By the way, if you like our walkway, I do have a video when we put the polymeric sand in between. And I'll throw out a video later on how we actually did the whole thing. And if you notice, the screws are where the red line is, and that's where the 2x4 is behind the door. And this last panel was a little too big, so we're going to mark it and then cut it. Against it and then you just mark it. Like, the line. Like, like as close to the line as possible. Okay. Wait, not yet, not yet, not yet. And here we are back at step five where you put the two side two by fours against the walls. This is our stucco wall and it didn't even have plywood. So he had to do this a different way. Unfortunately, they really don't make houses like they used to. This. this one didn't go through all the way, so he made the hole a little higher. So this is just drill, hammer drill, and then this is just hammer. We'll just, Aww. like if you're breaking cement. But they have a, they have some, might break cement, but they have like a significantly bigger one. That And the reason for this part is so that the screw doesn't stick out. This is the hardware he's using on the stucco walls. Like I mentioned, he said it felt like he didn't even drill through plywood. So adding these will secure the 2x4s stay put and it doesn't bring down the wall with it. Good thing. All right. Uh -huh. Things like this. Uh -huh. So in here, we're gonna, it's gonna hold like that, right? So you start off by pushing it in like this, and you get it flat in here. Now it's pulled against here, and then you.
Interesting. Pretty neat, right? That's how he figured out how to connect the 2x4 to the stucco wall. Which is why he left this till the end because he so wasn't cool. quite sure how to do it. But he figured it out. Yay, hubby! He's also adding some silicone for extra measure just so that the water doesn't seep through. And he put extra long um, screws. The initial ones he had were too short. And he's also going to put silicone around the whole thing at the end. You'll see. And now back to step 10, which is attaching the hardware. He was only able to put the screws on the left side because he couldn't reach the right side since it was too close to the wall. But it's fine, it attached anyway. But to let you know, if you're gonna put silicone around the wood the way he's going to do next, he had to remove the hardware to add the silicone. So you might wanna put the silicone first and then add this hardware. Silicone. Clear. Now we're at step 12, but it really should be step 10 because now he has to remove the hardware that's on that side that he's on right now. He then removes the silicone with his finger. I don't recommend this. Please don't do this. Put some gloves on or they sell like a... I actually think he has this too. They sell this little triangle that does this for you. But I think he just wanted to complete this already, so he did it by hand. And ta-da! Both doors are done. I'm so excited. This is the little pulley system that he made. Door opens by itself with these hinges. The other hinges he got on the other side actually don't open the door by itself. You have to manually push it. So I, we kind of like both ways. So when you're buying the hinges, just make sure that you get it how you like. If it's looser or tighter <laughs> and here's the second door this one has a little more gaps in it if you notice he also put the pulley system here so quick tip when you buy the cedar panels at the store if you lay them down on the floor and align them the way you want them that way you can make sure that there are no gaps or they're a little more symmetrical on this side of the house he actually did find a stud here on this part of the wall so that's why the weight bearing is on the wall this time as opposed to the other wall was the opposite i hope this video helped you out a little bit let me know if you guys made one yourselves and what you did different here are a couple more of the mistakes we made i just wanted to show you at the end of the video that way you don't make them yourselves so one of the mistakes was adding this hardware, which I thought looked very pretty, but it made the rectangle wonky. He tried to add sandbags to even it out, but that didn't work. Another mistake was adding screws diagonally. That didn't work. And I think I mentioned it before, we added holes to put the rebar through, but that was unnecessary. So just take off the rebar if you don't plan to add a metal door anytime in the future. <laughs> 